My name is Jeremy Browning, and I'm an application expert here at MLC CAD Systems. Today, I want to walk you through an introduction to an amazing 2D drafting tool called DraftSite. DraftSite is a powerful drafting software that allows users to quickly create the drawing that your company needs to get products and services complete. The DraftSite user interface has two distinct environments. There's a modern command manager, ribbon-based look, or a more classical look with a menu bar and toolbars. My personal favorite is the more modern ribbon look, similar to all of the current Office products like Word and Excel. With either look that you choose, there are a few other areas to focus on. There are dockable side panels that can be moved or set to auto hide. I personally like my properties pane to be docked on the left hand side of the screen and the others set to auto hide. Another awesome feature is the command line interface at the bottom of the screen. This area allows you to type the command that you would like to invoke and then hit enter to launch. In this case, I can launch the line command without using any buttons. I can also use one of my favorite commands, the power trim tool. The power trim tool will allow you to click and drag through any line that you would like to remove using the last line that it crossed as a cutting line. Command lines are cool and all, but what if your fingers are tired from a long night of browsing the internet? Well, how about we leverage one of my favorite ways of calling on commands, mouse gestures. Mouse gestures are commands that pop up next to your cursor when you right click and drag ever so slightly. These mouse gestures can be customized to the tools that you use every day, and it will allow you to save time when starting commands. Whether you are a new draft site user or a seasoned veteran, you may have to do a bunch of zooming in and out on the same areas of your document. This can be time consuming and very repetitive. One tool you may want to utilize is the named views command. Named views allow you to predefine areas of your drawing so that you can come back to them very quickly. This command can be found on the views tab or by hitting the space bar. All you have to do is hit new and give this view a name. Once it's been saved, you can access the name views command again and then choose the view that you would like to activate. Now let's start with a blank drawing and look at some of the drawing commands. These commands allow you to get your designs down on the page. The most basic yet critical command is the line command. The line command can be activated in many ways including the command prompt and mouse gestures. There are a number of ways to draw lines depending on the method that you want to enter the information. If you take a draft site training class with us here at MLC CAD Systems, we can cover every option that you have at your disposal. I will use a few of the methods to draw a simple drawing like direct distance and absolute Cartesian. We can start drawing the line at our XY Cartesian plane 0, 0. This is known as the origin. When starting at the origin, we know where everything is in relation to that point, almost like a home base. With the line command active and hovering over 0, 0, I will click to start the line. Don't do a click and drag or you're going to have a harder time drafting your drawing. Draft site can be clicky, kind of like a high school, but it will make your life easier than clicking and dragging. I can use a direct distance entry to get myself an 80 unit long line. I can then use the same method to get a second line 30 units long and vertical. Once you're done drawing, you can right click to end this command. It starts to feel like a finger workout with all the left and right clickage happening as you're drafting. I want to make another vertical line followed by a 30 degree angled line at 80 units long. Now I need a circle that is tangentially bound by our previously drawn lines. For this, I can use the circle command with the TTR option. This option requires a tangent, tangent, and radius entry. For this circle, I want the radius to be 15. If I need another circle to share the same center point, or rather be concentrically aligned, then I can use the e-snap overrides. 
With any command active, you can right click and choose eSnap override settings to choose what the active command will snap to. I want to confirm that center point is active. That way I can snap to the center point of the existing circle. This circle needs to be drawn at a radius of 3.5. I'll use the center point once more for an additional circle with the diameter value specified at 35 units. To represent a hex nut in our drawing, I can use a polygon tool with six sides that are five units long. Now I need to break out our favorite power tool again, power trim. All I have to do is do a click drag to remove the extra lines that we don't need. One way that I can visualize differences in our drawing is to use layers. There are many things that we could cover regarding layers, but at the most basic level, they allow you to quickly group together entities and define their color and or visibility. For this drawing, we only have our initial default layer called layer zero. Let's make another layer called hardware, and then we can add the hex nut that we previously drew. I will make this another color like magenta. I still think it's called pink and the magenta is a made up color, but my wife tells me that I'm wrong and that I might be colorblind. She's probably right, but don't let her know that I told you that. We can now choose the entities that make up the hardware and assign them to the hardware layer and then hide them or show them if we need them for manufacturing. The next thing we need to add to this drawing to get this manufactured are dimensions. Placing a dimension as a snap using either the smart dimension tool or a specific dimension type such as linear or diameter. Modifying of a dimension is a breeze with the dimension palette icon. This allows me to modify the dimension to have a tolerance value or add additional prefixes to convey more clarity with my design. Adding text to my drawings will allow me to convey more PMI or product manufacturing information so that there's no confusion about my design intent for the consumer of this drawing. Notes can either be single line or multi-line. This multi-line note will contain information about the nut we will use on this part. The last thing I want to discuss are blocks. Blocks are a handy tool that you can use when you need to reduce the complexity or overall size of a drawing. Blocks group multiple entities together to form a single new entity that only shows its insertion point when selected in a drawing. For this drawing, I can block the entities that make up a palm tree. Once blocked, it's very easy to use and we can copy and paste to add more trees to the design. Finally, to get this drawing in use, we're going to need to print it out. Using the manual setup configuration and the drawing boundary as the range, the preview shows that we might need to specify the drawing boundaries a little bit better. Using the command drawing bounds allows us to specify exactly what we want to be included in our print. The preview looks much nicer than it previously did. Our guys are sure going to appreciate not having to get out the magnifying glass to read the prints. Thank you for taking the time out of your day today to attend this webinar. If you'd like to learn more about DraftSight and its capabilities, please reach out to us so we can further the discussion.